Smart marketing gurus are always going to tell you, don't run a marketing campaign if you can't measure its success. And that's true, because if you run a campaign and you don't know what's going on, you are just throwing money away. For this, I'm going to show you a tool that's called WASC, and this is going to analyze and optimize our marketing ads. So let's go check it out right now. What's up, SaaS Masters? This is WASC, and if you want to check it out, link we provided in the description. Now, like I said before, it not only analyzes, but it also optimizes. That means that we're going to make our ads even better. And in return, we're going to have more sales, which is obviously really important. Now, this is WASC, and it's super easy to get started. Once you connect your ads account, it's a breeze to actually go through this. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to use WASC. So let's jump over to my dashboard. Okay, so this is my main panel. And like I said, the first thing you're going to do is connect your ads account. In this case, right now, you can connect your Facebook, Instagram, and your Google Ads account. Later on, they will be adding more platforms. To do this, go over to your avatar, click on it, go to account settings, and in account settings, we're going to go into connected accounts. Let's click on connected accounts, and this is where we're going to connect our domains. The reason you want to connect your domains is because you want to tie your ads to this. You want to know if the traffic that you are getting is organic or paid. So if it comes from ads and if it's paid, what's going on? What are they doing? Are they buying? Are they clicking on something? This is going to help you do this. Okay. And next you're going to connect your Facebook account and your Google account. It's super easy to connect. Just go ahead and connect the account. It's going to ask you to authorize WASC to read ads and modify. And once you enable that, we're going to have all the analytics. So this is how you're going to get started. Once you do that, we're going to go into manage and we're going to view the overview of the panel. Now, in this case, we're able to view in a quick overview of what's going on on this particular ad account. Now, in this case, we're viewing the Facebook account and we're able to view the amount spent, the clicks, cost per click. So in this case, it's in Turkish leaders. And yes, if you connect Mexican pesos, like in my case, it will also display Mexican pesos. If it's dollars, yens, whatever, it's going to work. Don't worry about that. Now, in this case, there's more mobile traffic and less desktop traffic in this one. The amount of impressions, the frequency, the cost per mile, and the score click through rate. So it's 0.07%. And then we can view our ads. Now, one of the beauties about WASC is that you can actually turn on and turn off an ad from here. This is super easier than going over to Facebook's Meta and then turn it off over there. A bunch of clicks that you have to do. In this case, just select the ad that you want to turn off and do this and you're good to go. All right. But in this case, we want to keep it enabled. Now, if we want to check out any of these ads because we want to optimize it, that is possible. So there's a drop down menu here to view the actual ads that correspond to this. Click on this one also. This one's turned off and this one is on. Let's go ahead and view this and see what's going on. OK, here we go. Here's one of the ad sets that we are previewing and you can see the optimization status for this one is a bidding. Now, what Wax is going to do is optimize the ad based on what you choose, if it's going to be bidding, budget or audience. And once you select this, you can start or manage the optimization. Now, in this case, we have an ad set performance score of mid. So it's not it's doing not bad, but not excellent. So it's right down the middle. The ad set performance metrics, so you can see daily budget, the impressions, the clicks, and we can analyze this. This is going to be way clearer than going checking, checking this out over there on Facebook. The app placement insights, age and gender device insights. So you got your age, gender and devices. Location insights, smart advice. So let's see what, what is advising us. So here we go. The cost per click for reward or video, et cetera, the audience and Instagram Explorer. So it's the ad performance is over the average. So that means we are paying more than what we should be. So that's the advice it's giving us. OK, and then we got some other advice here. We can also edit your ad set in this case, well, my ad set, and I can turn on or turn off where I want to display this ad. So right now I do want it on a Facebook feed, Instagram, Facebook marketplace. Maybe that's not the right spot. I don't want it to display there so I can turn this off and then leave the other ones on. And we have more options for story and reels, Instagram, search, etc. Leave on what you need. Now, like I said before, if you go over there on Facebook and do this, it's a big pain in the you know what, OK, because it's a whole bunch of clicks and a whole bunch of settings and every like two to three months, the settings go change and they're somewhere else. In this case, it's super easy to do it. Okay. Then you got your custom audience so I can create a new audience or I can use one of my saved audience. So I have some smart audience created, which I'll show you in a bit, but you can create one from here and select where you want this to display. Or in this case, it's set to United Kingdom. Detail targeting includes so I can view suggestions. 
include contacts matching, so online advertising, digital marketing, etc. The age range, the gender, and detail target audience. Now, I remember when back Facebook about two years ago, three, it was super easy to create an ad just like it is right here. Now they make everything more complex. I don't know why, but they do it, okay? And then you got your saved audience. So in this case, I have two audience right here and you can see it changed. This one is to Turkey and there's different settings for this digital marketing. I can set the date range, so the age range. So I don't have to stick with what it has, what I've created. I can actually modify it from here also, okay? And then you got your asset recent changes. So you can view everything that's going on from here, from every single change, like enable, disable, modify, and et cetera. It's going to be available right here. This is a great way to keep track of what's going on. Now, if you want to manage the optimization, I'll click on this one. And in here we have our ad campaign. So I have the awareness campaign right now, impressions goal, and its performance is minimum. Okay. And the optimization setting is bidding. That's how I said it. It hasn't kicked in. So that's why we're getting a bad performance that will be improved later on. Then you got your budget audience and you can go ahead and optimize. This one has been optimized already, but I can go ahead and manage it here in case I want to change the status. So maybe I want to turn this off. Okay, it's been turned off and now I can select the type of optimization that I want to use. If it's going to be bidding, well, go ahead and select this one. If it's going to be budget, if it's going to be audience and then just hit optimize and it's going to start kicking in once you enable that. Now it's super easy, right? That's for the Facebook optimization. Now, if you have several Facebook ad accounts connected, you will see them over on the top here in the drop down menu and you can optimize the other ads that it that are separated on another Facebook ad account. OK, now let's go check out Google Optimize and check out our ads for Google. OK, here is my Google Ads account connected already. And you can see I have a campaign running for my website, which is SaaS Master. And in this case, I haven't performed an optimization. Now, in this case, I want to optimize for budget, even though I'm doing great in performance. I do want to optimize this for budget and I'll show you each one how the settings are going to apply. For example, for budget, if I'm going to optimize for budget, it's going to tell me what optimization type do I want to use? Do I want to reallocate the budget? Do I want to increase, decrease the budget? So is that how the optimization is going to work and lower limit and the upper limit based on percentage, like how much I want to raise or how much I want to lower. And if it's possible, obviously, with the optimization settings that we're going to use. Now, if it's going to be keyword optimization, let's go ahead and select it. It's going to ask me what type. Removing conflict data negative keywords, which is really great. You want to remove those automatically. Automatically cross negative keywords. So if I want to select this, it's going to do it. If I want to use pause under perform keywords, which is pretty much I do want to do that, but I'm not going to set it up right now, but I do want to set that up. The ad, if I want to optimize that the type plus underperform ads or landing page checker or bidding, but it's selected optimize. It's going to be right bidding or not optimize your bidding. So if I want to optimize it, I can just set right there. In this case, I want to pause underperform ads. So if it's not going doing great, just go ahead and pause it. Or if the status changes from great, then under performance, it's going to turn it off automatically. So it's pretty easy to optimize our ads from here. Now let's go check out our smart audience. I can go ahead and create an audience or I can view my audience here. This audience can be applied obviously to your campaigns. So creating smart audience is obviously a smart idea. Now in this case, there's an audience here for the type most used interest, hidden interest and most used interest again. Let me show you how that is going to be what it's selected here. You can see the audience size for this one, the age, the country, the gender, and selected interest and negative interest. I can go send this to campaign if I like. Here's another example for hidden interest. And in this case, there's an audience size, which is pretty big, the age, the country, the gender, and the selected interest. Now, if I want to create one of these audience, I can go ahead and create one right now by clicking on create audience. And I have four options for smart targeted audience. One, I can find my competitor's audience. I can select most used target audience, export hidden interest, or WASC JS discovery audience visitors segments and create an audience for this. You will have to have connected your site with WASC. Okay. In this case, I'm going to use most used targeted audience. Go ahead and continue. Here we go. Let's go ahead and create our audience. So in this case category, let's just say software. For example, there's several interests here. So I am going to select online shopping and something else, artificial intelligence. I'll add those two for now. Okay. There's also more for software, software company that I can go ahead and select here, but I'll keep it as it is. I'll add technology for this. 
Okay, select a negative interest. So if, for example, Forex Trader is not something that I'm interested in, maybe it has nothing to do with my particular ad campaign, I can set that as a negative interest. Then we have the country, in this case also like Mexico, just for testing purposes. I can select more if I like. Minimum age, maybe I want more mature audience, maybe 28 to, and let's go all the way up to 50, for example. And I have no preference, gender is all. I can save the audience. Let's give the audience a name. So I'll just say test audience. And everything looks fine. It tells me the audience size, which is super big. Maybe you want to reduce that by adding more negative interest, maybe changing the, the age range, etc. You can do that from here. In this case, I'll save the audience. Here we go. Now we have our audience created and it's going to be available in our list audience. OK, we now have our audience right here and I can go ahead and send it to a campaign if that's what I need. I'll just select the campaign. The ad set based on that campaign, copy the ad set and send or send the audience as it is. So it's super easy to create this with this system that West has. OK, now there's also a feature that is smart analytics. This one I really love because it's going to give you a lot of analytics based on your website. Now, right now, I have connected my site. Let me go ahead and open it up, which is sasmaster.net, and it's connected to WASC. All you have to do is add a code, and you're good to go. In this case, I don't have a behavior flow yet because I've just connected it. And then I have my event pie. In this case, there's visitors from Mexico and Australia, and I just connected this a few minutes ago. It already has some audience here, two from Mexico and one from Australia. The source, it's organic. It wasn't by paid ad. The heat map of what's going on. There's not enough visitors right now to show me a heat map. I'll show you the other website that's connected here in a bit, but it's super cool that we have this option here. I'm not going to wait for that one. We can also create event signals. Okay. So in this case, I created an event called forms flow for my domain, the event type created date. And if there's an increase of 10% based on the data in the last 30 days, I'm able to view it here. Okay. If I want to create a signal, super easy. I'll just say test for the signal. And then what is going on? So based of what has been going on the site, you can create these events. So these pop up because I actually click, click on these and it's going to give me the option to create the event. So in this case, the event last, I don't know, seven days, signal metric, 50% signal metric type. If it's an increase or a decrease, I'm going to say increase and I can create the signal and then I have something to measure based on that. Okay. Now let me show you the other website that's connected to show you the heat map. Let's go down here. You can see there's more countries visited. There's more data on this. And then we have a heat map for these pages. Now, based on the page that you click on, it's going to show you the heat map. The heat map is where people are most focused on or click the, the most. So it's a really great option to see now for mobile. Now, mobile, you can see it's all red because the, the first section, because obviously you view the whole section in the beginning, but then it's going to drop. So you can see where the people are focusing on once you go scrolling down this mobile page. Okay, so you have all that information there. Now, there's also a feature that's an uptime status. If you want to enable this, just go ahead and select yes. In this case, I'm not going to select it, but it is possible with WASC. And there's reporting. You can create reports. You can customize these reports. So I'm going to show you. So in this case, there's a report for this ad account. I can view it here, report schedules, and I can create my own report. So it's going to create one. And in this case, I have a blank page right here. So I can add the type of charts that I want to preview on my report. So I'll do a line chart, a column chart, a store card. And when I select on these elements, I can actually change the options. So what do I want to display on this chart? Is it going to be click, suspend, the frequency, impressions, etc. Now, if I scroll down here, I can set a report name for this. I'll say test cover page footer text. So that's what we're reviewing right here. This is the footer test. Obviously, you can change this. You can add your logo, report dates, the actions and go ahead and save it. And you have a customized report super easily. Either you want to use this for Facebook ads or you want to use it for your Google ads and create the reports based on this. So basically it's super easy to do. OK, next we have the AI tools. They have the AI ad copywriter and they will be adding more tools to this. For now, this one's the ad one. Here we go. OK, we're able to create our AI Facebook text generator. You can use Google, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, etc. In this case, you can add your brands right here. In this case, I'm going to select my coffee brand that I have. And I want to use this for title text and the keywords for my coffee brand. Let me add some here. OK, so a few words have been added here. Let's go ahead and create the text and let's give it a few seconds to let AI generate it for us. 
Here we go. We just got the results for this. We can go ahead and indulge in our specialty coffee at Cafecio. Experience the perfect latte at Cafecio. And you can check out all these options. You can go ahead and edit these, copy it, or save it as favorite to use later on. That's for the ad copy. Like I said, they will be adding more tools in the future. So several tools available for WASC. One of the main ones that I like is the optimization settings that WASC provides us because it's going to help us save time by optimizing the ad without our need. We just tell it what we want to optimize and it's good to go and it's going to do its job. So if you want to check out WASC, don't forget that the link we provided in the description, you can go ahead and analyze and optimize your ads really quickly with WASC. And that's a wrap.